Good morning, everybody. I know that you're waiting to, you know, just waiting with bated breath to figure out how to do this free response question from last year, um, last year's exam, that is. And so that's what we're going to do today. We are going to try to figure this one out. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and read through the problem. We've got a projectile launcher consisting of a spring with an attached plate as shown in this figure. When the spring is compressed, the plate can be held in place by a pin at any of the three positions, A, B, or C. For example, figure two shows a steel sphere placed against the plate, which is held in place by a pin at position C. The sphere is launched upon release of the pin. A student hypothesized that the spring constant of the spring inside the launcher has the same value for different compression distances. The student plans to test the hypothesis by launching the sphere using the launcher. Okay, so when we design our experiment, it has to have the launcher being used. And the first thing we want to do is state a basic physics principle or law the student could use in designing an experiment to test the hypothesis. Please make sure you're always answering the question that's being asked. Here, we're not designing the experiment. We're just talking about what basic principle that experiment would have to be designed around. Okay, and, and I think the, the easiest thing to do here would be just to, uh, since we're actually having to launch the launcher, we can't just simply use uh, Hooke's law. We're going to have to apply the uh, conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy. Okay. Now we want to determine an expression for the spring constant in terms of quantities that can be obtained from the measurements made with equipment usually found in a school physics laboratory. Okay, so how am I going to use this to determine an expression for the spring constant? That will take a little bit more, um, more explanation, right? So law of conservation of energy states that the um, mechanical energy you start with plus any work done by external forces would equal the mechanical energy you end up with, okay? Now what I think I'm going to choose to do, and there's, there's a few ways to, to do this experiment, I think I'm gonna launch this one horizontally. I think they might have, have had us um, thinking about that since that's how they drew it. You could also launch it vertically in an experiment uh, and apply conservation of energy, but for my experiment, I'm gonna talk about um, launching it horizontally. And I'm gonna launch it from a tabletop and it's going to, yeah, here, I'll just draw a quick sketch of it. I'm gonna launch it from a tabletop and it's going to hit the ground below. And I'm gonna use concepts of like projectile motion to get my, my data. But ultimately what I'm going to be able to do is talk about the potential energy that I start with being transformed into some kinetic energy right at, at launch, which will of course give it some speed, okay? And so at first it's at rest. Uh, I'm going to uh, suggest that the external forces of air resistance um, throughout the flight are negligible, as well as uh, friction within the, um, within the apparatus itself. And so then it's going to strike the ground, but I'm only using the projectile to figure out how fast it's going originally. So I'm not really talking about any change in um, uh, gravitational potential yet. I just want this, this part of the process where the potential energy in the spring goes right to the kinetic energy. And so that's basically what I have. I have elastic potential becoming kinetic energy at launch. Okay, now elastic potential energy is one half spring constant times um, the compression length squared and kinetic energy is one half um, mv squared. Um, and so the halves would cancel out and I would divide by x squared and I would see that k equals mv squared divided by x squared. That is my, sorry, that is my uh, derivation uh, or my expression for the spring constant in terms of quantities that I can obtain from measurements. Now, um, 
a couple things. I'm going to change this X from X. Um, no, I'll keep it as X. That's that's fine. Um, so let's see what we have to do next. So we want to design an experimental procedure to test the hypothesis in which the student uses the launcher to launch the sphere. Assume equipment usually found in a high school school physics laboratory is available. Again, guys, please use the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, um, just don't come up with any exotic materials or equipment. Um, just stuff like meter sticks, for example. Like, let, let's look at, at my setup. What can I actually measure here? Well, I could measure how far back I've compressed the spring. And so that's going to be um, compression distance. And I've called that X already. And the equipment I would use to measure that, well, that would just be a little ruler. Maybe a centimeter scale, if you prefer. Okay, what else could I measure? Well, in order to look study this uh, projectile motion, I'm going to have to figure out what the height of this table is. I'm going to call that my delta Y. And so delta Y is my vertical displacement. And I'll use a meter stick for that. The other thing I can do is measure this. I'm going to call this delta X. That's why I wanted to change this. I might have used D or something other than an X because I have X here and delta X here. I don't like that. Um, so delta X is my horizontal displacement. And that's going to be also a meter stick. Those are really the only measurements I need to take here. And so that's, that's what I'm going to keep it as. And you know what? This is really bugging me. So I'm going to change this to a D for the compression distance. And I'm also going to change this to a D. I'll just rewrite it, Mr. Kuda. K, little spring constant, little k, equals M v squared over d squared. Okay. All right. <clears throat> That's it. I didn't need all these rows. Don't feel like you have to fill up all the all the spaces. They're just trying to um, make sure that you have adequate room for whatever your experiment ends up being. There is not one answer for this on the rubric. There's multiple answers. So you could have shot it vertically, for example. Um, but you do have to apply um, conservation of energy here. Um, so now I want to go ahead and describe the procedure uh, to be used to test the hypothesis. Okay, these are supposed to be really designed to be really obvious and really straightforward. So make sure you're not going um, going crazy with your explanation. Four or five lines, maybe bullet points, will be fine. So. Um, also, they want to know, provide enough detail so that another student could replicate the experiment, including any steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty. Okay, To reduce experimental uncertainty, that's you'd want to do multiple trials. Um, also, as needed, use the symbols defined in the table or include a simple diagram with the setup. I really encourage you guys to do that. Include a simple diagram of your setup. So I'm going to do that as quickly as I can. 